morning. Welcome to the Generator Model Daughter Request Call. My name is Judy Cross, and I will be facilitating today's call. We will pause for questions periodically, so please press pound, please press pound two on your phone to enter the queue. The presentation is available on our website under the Stay Informed tab, Stakeholder Process under Miscellaneous. As a reminder, this meeting is being recorded and is for informational and convenience purposes only. The recording will be posted on our website for a short time. The recordings and any related transcripts should not be reprinted without the ISD permission. And with that, we'll go around the room so you know who's, um, who's on the call. Uh, hi, this is Rithi Ray with ISO Infrastructure Contracts and Management. Sung Jo Ju, ISO Transmission Planning. Mr. Satsuki, Transmission Planning. Irene Green, ISO Transmission Planning. All right, and with that, we'll turn it over to Ray. Hello, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for this webinar today. So, as, as we just to give everyone a quick background, uh, we added a new section in the Transmission Planning BPM uh, under PRR 1067. Uh, this section then outlines the uh, new data submission requirements for all participating generators in the ISO market. It also sets the timelines for these different categories and phases of generators. Uh, and in the end, it's going to be a five-year process that's going to be conducted by the ISO and all the PTOs for receiving the uh, requested and required data from all the participating generators. We set up this webinar so that we can help participating generators understand the data that's required and also help them with the submission process uh, to allow for a more uh, streamlined process. So right now, we have the outline of the presentation up. Uh, we'll go give a quick overview of the PRR. We'll talk about the two uh, spreadsheets that we have posted on the ISO website, which are uh, critical for uh, understanding and completing the submission process. And then we'll also discuss the submission process itself. We also intend to go through a sample of a filled up data sheet to help people understand how, what data is require, required and how to fill up the data sheet. Uh, so that's going to be the agenda for today. <clears throat> so PRR 1067, as I uh, mentioned, added the new Section 10 to the BPM for transmission planning process. It became effective August 1st, 2018. Uh, what the new Section 10 does is it defines five different categories of generating units. It establishes the technical and data requirements for each category of generating unit. It also provides the deadlines for submission of data. It outlines the submission process. And it also provides the determination of compliance and the result of non-compliance with uh, the uh, submission of the data. The data submission is the responsibility of the participating generator and it's the entity that holds the PGA for the specific resource ID. Uh, all the data requirements have been established with respect to resource IDs in the ISO market. Uh, over the next two slides, I'll give an overview of the data request process that we have set up. Uh, we, we did split it up into two sections. One is for uh, generators that are existing and are currently commercial in the ISO market. And the next uh, uh, slide will outline what is the process for generators that will be reaching commercial operation in the ISO market in the future. So we're uh, referring to them as new resources. So now that the BPM is effective, the ISO will begin sending letters to each generator owner with a CC to the appropriate uh, scheduling coordinator. And these letters will go out at least six to eight months in advance of the submission deadline. The letter will identify the, the spreadsheet that the generator needs to look at. Uh, it will provide guidance on how to submit the data and any, uh, in terms of we do want the data submitted via email in a specific format, so we will make sure we'll outline that in the, uh, in the letter itself. Along with the letter, we, the ISO and the PTOs will also provide 
the data request template, which is a spreadsheet uh, pre-populated with the data that the ISO and PTO have on record, and they'll also provide other files that we have on record with this, uh, for the specific uh, generator. The next slide is for the uh, request process for new generators. It's very similar to what we're doing for existing ones, except the uh, deadline for new generators is based on the commercial operation date for that specific resource. So new generators have 120 days from the commercial operation date to submit the data that will be requested. Uh, it's for us, so we do have more data for new resources, so the data request template will ask for any data that we may be missing or that uh, needs to get updated. Uh, it'll have the, la the letter will look very similar to what we do for existing generators. It will contain the instructions uh, on how to submit the data, and it will provide links to the uh, different spreadsheets and that the generator owner needs to look at. Uh, we'll, uh, right now, we'll go over the two spreadsheets that we have, uh, two categories of spreadsheets that we have posted on the web page for transmission planning process. The, the, the spreadsheets that we're going to go over today are actually samples. Um, the samples haven't been posted, but I believe the previous versions are posted. So you will see the previous versions, and then we will be uh, showing you a sample of the new information. So if you have any questions thus far, um, press pound two on your phone, and we'll take them now as I switch over to the spreadsheet. All right. Do we have any questions? We do not so far. And just as a reminder, um, we do not take, uh, if you want to ask a question, press pound two on your phone. I'm not, uh, if it's a general question, um, I'm not going to be answering um, the questions over chat. Um, so with that, I, I don't have any questions. So, so uh, as was clarified before. We got one, sorry. Okay, please go. <laughs> we'll take the first one, Keegan. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. Hi, my name is uh, Chris. I just wanted to know uh, for the for the new um, generating resources, it's 120 days after COD. Once achieving COD, will the Caliso also be uh, providing an email to the generator owner? As for the existing um, generate, I mean the existing generating units, or is this something that we have to find on the Caliso website? So the process for requesting data is the same both for existing and new. So you're correct. We will be providing an email to the generator owner on commercial operation requesting the data we need, so same as how we do for existing generators. Perfect. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay. Next question, please. Hi. Uh, this is Val with Silicon Valley Power. I wanted to know, does this call uh, pertain to non-PTOs? Uh, can you clarify the question as to, uh, in terms of how, uh, how does it apply to non-PTOs? It applies to all participating generators in the ISO market, uh, irrespective of where you're connected to. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that question. Um, all right. Um, uh, we do not have any additional questions. So uh, we have posted two uh, sets of spreadsheets on the uh, website for transmission planning process. The, the first spreadsheet, which is the generator category spreadsheet, uh, what it does is it establishes uh, the category, uh, that is the category of uh, technical data requirement and data submission for every uh, participating generator, and it also provides the phase of data submission. So this way the generator owner can identify what is the data set I need to submit and what is my phase and what is my deadline of data submission. Uh, once you have the category and the phase, the BPM provides the details of that category and the phase for data submission. So it does need to be correlated with the BPM. Uh, 
this is a brief overview of the, the different categories of data submission. It has been explained in much more detail in the BPM itself. Uh, we have five categories and they have been established based on the nameplate capacity of the generating unit and the voltage that is the point of interconnection to the ISO grid. Or the point of interconnection to the transmission system. So if for category one, for example, if it's an individual resource uh, above 20 MVA and is connected at 100 kV or above, it, uh, this is the category that applies to it. Uh, we also have aggregate resources in the ISO grid. For those, the limit is 75 MVA. Uh, this is in line with what uh, NERC and WEC have established in terms of uh, their data requirements. So we are following the uh, categories of data requirements and the criteria for establishing the data as has already been established by NERC or through WEC policy. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we can we go down to the categories uh, and it, it is, in, it is in descending order in terms of nameplate capacity and voltage. Uh, category four and five are covering resources that are below 60 kV. Uh, if the resource is modeled as separately or as a separate uh, generating unit in the base case, that, of, that is category four. For category five, it's an aggregate resource in the base case, but uh, below 60 kV, uh, that is what applies. Okay, so the next slide is for uh, discussing the generated data request template. We will be walking everyone through a sample uh, data template which has been uh, filled out with just an example data, so to help people understand how better to fill it out and to answer any questions that may come up today. So I'll be turning it over to Sanjay. Uh, well, uh, the data requirement for category one and two are, um, okay. It's more changing than three and four, so we'll work through some uh, a little bit more complicated examples so we can understand what is required. What do you need to do? So those templates, those are in Excel version format. Um, there, there isn't any special requirement as long as you can use uh, Windows Excel, you should be able to open those and fill out the information. So it's organized by uh, four tasks. The first one is the, the first task instruction list. Um, this one gives you some instruction to help you know what you need to do, um, what each tab means to you. Uh, I, really quick, I just tell you that for the the, um, the main tab you need to fill out is equipment data. On that tab, you only fill out where it is a, a white cell. Uh, if it's a green, you, uh, you will do a selection from the option box. If it's agreed, don't enter anything. We have formula built in those cells to do the calculation. Yeah, you can read uh, all the instructions. I'm not going to uh, go over all the instructions here. So let's look at the first tab, introduction. So the TTOs will uh, pre-populate all those uh, templates for the generators. So when you get when you receive an email from ISO, you will get this spreadsheet in the, uh, together with the email. And on this introduction task, it shows the name of the plant and the resource ID of the gener uh, generated team unit inside that plant. And we have all the basic information already filled out. We'll show what's the POI, what's the uh, POZ, 
If a generator interconnects to the ISO control grid, the POI and the POD are the same. If a generator connects to the distribution system, the point of interconnection will be on the distribution system. The POD, the point of delivery, will be the ISO. So then uh, what type of generation facility this one is, what's the megawatt at the point of interconnection, uh, any on-site uh, load you can tell from this, for, for this example it's a cogen because it has a high on-site uh, load. Uh, if, the, if ISO or the PTO has the uh, reactive capability test report, we will put the date here. Uh, if we don't have any report, this will be blank, and we ask the customer to fill it out, so the generator owner to fill it out. Then also, if we have dynamic model test report, we will put a date here, otherwise blank. And then there are the contact information if we have. So that's the basic information of the generation facilities. Then down here, it shows the requirement, what you need to submit. And we will tell you if we have any data or we don't have any data at all. So for this, in this, for this example, we do have single line diagram, so we put the data on file. That means we will provide whatever we have and you need to verify and update if there are changes to, to the information we have on file. And equipment data, we put required yes, we fill it out, but you need to verify and update all the information on the equipment data tab. Test report for real and reactive power capability. We have a report as indicated here. We have a date, so that means we have a report, and we'll say data on file. And if you have a more recent one, then submit that to us. Otherwise, you can leave it as is. Uh, power flow model in ETC format. Uh, typically, you will see data on file because we, in most of the existing general, we do have the, uh, the power flow model. So what you need to do is to verify the EPC is correct uh, and it's up to date. Dynamic model, again, is the most, most of the generation we do have dynamic model, so we'll say data on file and the, you, the generator owner should verify and uh, update. Test report for dynamic model. This example, we have a <coughs> test data for dynamic model, so it, it's also data on file. Then the last one is for electromagnetic tra transient model that for subsynchronous uh, resonance study. So the PQ and ISO will fill out yes or no for data on file. So if we say no, that means this generator does not <coughs> need to provide that. Uh, SSR model, the more detailed model. If we put yes, then the generator owner should provide that model to, to ISO. So that's the introduction tab. Any questions on this tab? Okay. So next tab, equipment data. This is where all the data uh, Protein. So, when you start <clears throat> on the top part, the second one, that is overall plan of megawatt information. So remember, don't put anything if the cell is gray. Just put in where it's uh, the, in the white cells. So here you enter what's the uh, growth output from your plant, what's the ox load. Then we will calculate the net megawatt for you. Uh, also, you, can, you should enter anticipated loss. Uh, actually, we will fill this out. In this example, the anticipated loss is very small, probably close to zero, and the delta is really short. Um, so the megawatt at QI is same as the net megawatt at the terminal. The, this top, uh, the, uh, this top cell uh, in row four is the total generating capacity growth nameplate capacity. Don't enter here. We will calculate this number from data you provide in section two. So section, two, this is overall. Then section two is on the individual generating units. In this example, this is a combined cycle plant. 
and there are two combined cycle units. So each one has two CTs and one ST. So all the CTs are identical, and the two S the steam turbines are also identical. So instead of enter six units, you can just put two. So for the CTs, since they are identical, the combustion turbines, you say you can put a name that's more meaningful to you instead of using the default unit one, unit two, unit three. So I put CTs. So it's a synchronous generator. Uh, it's a combined uh, combined cycle combustion turbine uh, part. It's by GE, and the model name we don't know, so we leave it blank. Uh, but there's a model. So sometimes you probably don't have both. You can enter just either one model name or model number. Then the year manufacturers don't know, and there are four of these uh, machine turbines, same type of generators. So you put four here. Then so, for the steam turbine, there are two of them, so you put two here. Then you enter the voltage, the terminal voltage, the MVA rating, the megawatt rating. So once you enter all those information here, the, the top cell will be populated. It's calculated from the individual unit. Also, you provide a power factor. What's the rate, the power factor, and the, the power factor regulation range. Here, as we also ask for the juke, the frequency response juke, the upward and the, the downward. So we put 0% since we don't really know. Those information were not collected before, so we may not have uh, good information on the juke in, in both directions. So you should verify and enter the correct numbers here. So the rest of the spreadsheet, it, it, is, it depends on which, what type of generator you have. So if the, for, the, for this example, it's a synchronous generator, so you need to fill out section three, that's the synchronous generator information. So again, so you fill out the information for CTs and, and the steam turbines. So we, we, we just ask you, so uh, for the generator, what's the dynamic model name? Uh, if you just select from one of those. Uh, if, if you don't use any of those, so we already put all the um, generic model from the library, and that those are all the approved model by uh, WAC. But if you are not using one of those WAC approved model, you put other and explain to us why you are using a non-approved model. So you select the model name for each unit you entered, and then the Next part is the excitation <coughs> control. So you enter the manufacturer, then you select what's the exciter type. This is kind of long. Uh, the, the selection box that showed all the, the text, so you may have to click, then look at it, then select the final one. Uh, we will, if we know the information, we will, we will pre uh, Still here, but if we don't know, like this one, we don't know the manufacturer, we don't know the type, but those are blank, the generator owner. Okay. So those are blank, the generator owner should enter the information. Then you just select what's the model you, you use. Also, we already populate the list with all the approved model. You select one of them. Then if there are also over excitation limiter, uh, under excitation limit, you can select from here. That's OEL, or UEL models. So it's quite simple. You just select what's, what's the manufacturer and what's the model we should use. And same thing for, for PSS, uh, power system stabilizer. You tell what, uh, who is the manufacturer and what, what model you use. And so for the for combined cycle, the PSS is on the combustion turbines. So for the steam turbine, you put NA, not applicable. Then for the governor control, Again, select what, what's the type of your governor, uh, what's the type of your turbine, and the manufacturer, and what's the dynamic model name you select from one of the approved models. That's the dynamic model part. Then next section is about short circuit duty. 
So for synchronous generator, you will provide positive sequence, uh, subtransient reactance, saturated and unsaturated, and negative sequence reactance, and the zero sequence, and the MV base for those values. If it's uh, grounded, then provide the grounding information. Uh, for protection, so all we ask is do you have this uh, relay or not? So like on the over concussion relay, yes or no. On the over voltage relay, yes or no. Out of step relay, yes or no. If, we, if you answer yes to the under uh, over voltage and on the over uh, frequency relay, then tell us if your settings are compliant with PRC24. If it's not compliant with the PRC24, uh, tell us why. Uh, is there any physical limitation that uh, prevents you from meeting the PRC24? So this section, section four is for induction generator. This is a synchronous, uh, this is com um, combined cycle plan, so it doesn't apply, skip this section. Then the next section is for inverter-based, so again, skip it. So you can then go to section six, voltage power factor control. So we will, en we will enter the Q max, Q mean we have in the power flow model here. And we also calculate based on the MVE rating and the um, uh, megawatt rating what's the, uh, in theory, the maximum watt capability from the generating unit. And supposedly those numbers should be less than the calculated number. Yes, sir. For PMAX. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is for, for the, this QMAX, Q mean are at the maximum output, active output. Then the temperature for this capability, uh, we usually don't know, so we expect the generator owner to enter you know, that the ambient temperature associated with that capability. If there are any other wire devices, enter them here. So what type of wire devices? It's a selection. You can have fixed capacitor, uh, reactor, SVD, SVC, SECOM, and what's the um, capacity of that wire devices and where it is, which bus, like at the high side, low side of the main step up transformer, at the collector bus, but for the synchronous generator, there's enough wire capability from the generators themselves. Usually, those will be blank. There are, not, there are no other <coughs> wire devices. After the wire devices, this is transformer data. So, so for this uh, plant, uh, all four GSU for the CTs are identical. The two GSU for the STs are also identical, so you only need to enter uh, each one once. So for the CT GSU, there are four of them, and you enter all the data, the MVA, the rated MVA, the grounding, and, and the, the winding connection, then the, the voltage and impedance. Same thing for the ST GSU, enter all the information for the transformer. Then here, there's some calculation we will do based on the high side voltage and the, um, the winding on the high side of the transformer. We will say yes or no. Those are calculated. If it's yes to both, then you, are, you need to provide information. You need to provide DC resistance of the transformer in this cell. If it's, uh, one of them shows no, then you can leave this blank. We'll take the first caller. Um, hi, I had a question about the um, the frequency response troop and dead bands. Is there, is there values um, that are required from the Cal ISO for those settings? Yeah, those data, we require those data so we know what's your frequency response. 
we are not asking that you must have a response or not. We are asking for the data. Of course, uh, I'm more um, I'm more uh, well versed with the uh, ERCOT region, and the ERCOT has a NERC standard, the BAL001 TRE, which uh, generator owners will have to set their frequency data bands as well as the frequency droop settings to certain values. Just wondering if the Cal ISO has something within that nature to guide uh, generator owners on what those responsibilities are. Yeah, for the newer ones, we'll follow the new FERC order. Uh, for the old one, I believe we do, right? The governor control. Uh, I can, uh, we can check. Have to check. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Yes, yeah, for, for the old, I believe for synchron generator there should be one, but the, the existing uh, inverter base, they don't have one, and the new, the, the new inverter base will really have the requirement from the new FERC order. Okay. Okay. So the transformer, for transformer data, uh, those two sections are exactly the same because the, the space, uh, we try to accommodate more transformers so that it's repeated. If you don't use all the space, then the second part, you can leave it blank. Then the next part is the interconnection facilities line data. Basically, this is for the Gentai. So in this example, uh, we have a double circuit Gentai. So I put the Gentai name as Gentai two of them, so I enter the data once, but I indicate this is, there are two lines with identical parameters. Uh, it is a 230 kV Gentai. Uh, I don't know the length, like it is probably close to zero. Uh, then it is from the KLISO bus uh, to the plant bus. Uh, don't know the, type, the conductor type and size, so the generator owner should fill those out. Uh, I, from the model, we do know the ratings. So just enter the AMP uh, rating, then the MVA rating will be calculated. There's summer and the winter. If you don't distinguish between summer and winter, just use the same uh, ratings for those. Then the positive, negative, uh, positive and zero sequence of resistance and the reactance, enter it here. So enter that for the entire line length. So we, we will just pull this directly from the power flow case, base case or the short circuit, build, short, short circuit database. I will enter here and you will, the generator owner will verify and update. They are on the 100 MVA base. Since this is a synchronous generator, there's no collector, so this section will be blank. So the, the PTO and the ISO will fill out this form as much as we can. We send this to you. You update all the applicable sections. When the generator fills out the equipment data, should go through the self-validation process. We build a validation tab on this template. So, the, so there are things you need to verify and check. Uh, each item you have verified, this column A is for you to sign off. So you, you check if they, you, you exam the single line diagram, you provide an update, then you say, okay, you choose yes, you have verified it. And you, you have the test report, they say yes. So eventually the goal is you should have yes answered to all the questions in this column A or NA not applicable. So you provide for EPC, so those are general uh, what you need to provide, then more detailed information. Did you fill out all the applicable data on the equipment tab? Ta equipment data tab, yes. It, ha it should be yes from you. And uh, so are, are the data consistent with your single line diagram, uh, consistent with the power flow model, with dynamic model? So you need to go through this list and answer each question, the answer should be either yes or an A. If it's a no, then you need to do more homework before you submit that data to us. Once you submit that to us, we will go through the same 
that is in review process, and we will answer on the right side, say yes, no, not applicable. When, in the, uh, when column I is all yes and NA, this submission is complete and valid. Also, every time we review, if we if, if, if see some deficiency, we will put comments here, telling you we will have comments here and also a summary of comments here in this box. So it's easier for you to track what is not correct and what needs to be fixed. So this is the first example. Any questions on this example? And just as a reminder, please press pound two on your phone to enter the queue. All right. Okay. Don't forget to enlarge it for that. Okay. So the first example is a synchronous generator plant. So the second one is a wind plant. So we will, it will, we will require different data section on that equipment data tab. So I'll show you another example here. So here it's a wind plant and it has a resource ID, ISO resource ID. Uh, well, again, we will populate all those in, for this one. We never receive any capability test report. We never receive uh, but we, we we have a dynamic model test report, so we enter date here, but this is blank, and we don't have any report on file. So single line diagram, we have data on file, equipment data you need to uh, fill out and you need to complete and verify. Test report for real and reactive power survey is required and we don't have it. A power flow model, data on file. DYD, or we have it on file. Then test report, uh, this one should be data on file because we have a uh, report and it is within uh, 10 years. Now, this, for this one, we also require the uh, supersynchronous resonance study model. So on the equipment data, Again, you first just fill out the five cells in this top section, give the general plant megawatt information. The growth output is 150 megawatt, no ox load, and there's 2.51 megawatt losses through the collector and the gen time. So that we'll calculate at the POI, your net megawatt is 147. So this is the type three line. There are 50 of them. So you enter the data here. So each one is a three megawatt, and this is a vector uh, type three wind turbine. You select it's the DC, it's the inverter. That's the technology, and the type is type three. And you enter the, the manufacturer, the model name. Uh, we don't know when it is manufactured, so you tell us. Voltage and the rating, megawatt rating. Okay. Yeah, we'll fix this. There should be formula here. The formula is lost here. Then the, the power factor regulation range. So this is similar to the synchronous generator example. Then for this one, you will skip section three. Go to section four. Section four is for induction generator. So since this is turbine, uh, this is the type three wind turbine, it's both induction and inverter based. Then you will, you will need to provide both uh, inductor, um, induction generator information and the inverter based information. But here is a note for, for the dynamic model. So if it's a uh, type three wind turbine, uh, you enter dynamic model actually in the inverter section, not on the induction. Then for traffic uh, data, tell us what's the maximum current during the fault detection and the duration for that fault current. So you should enter here. You don't need to enter here. 
then the protection against yes or no, if, it, uh, if you do have uh, frequency, uh, on the over frequency, on the over voltage relays, and tell us if they are PRC24 compliant. If not, what's the physical limitation? It will also enter inverter-based generator information for type 3 wind turbines. So this is a generator name. Then you can skip this because for uh, type 3 wind generator, you will enter short-circuit duty data under the induction generator. So you can skip this part. For, but then you will select the dynamic model for the uh, wind turbine. So there are, well, we have already, those are all selection box. We have already list all the approved models for you. Uh, you just pick. Uh, sometimes there isn't any second. There's only one approved model for that type of control. We just select for generator control, for electrical control, uh, control plant control, drive uh, chain, uh, aerodynamic, pitch control, torque control. If it's uh, solar, if it's in the distribution, it might be, you might be using the distributed solar PV model, and we have that here, that's PVD1 or DERA. Yeah, the protection is kind of same as here. You can enter once. So it's, it's quite simple, it's there less to enter than the synchronous generators. Then for voltage control, this might be a little bit more complicated than the synchronous generator because typically you do need to install additional wire devices uh, for the inverter-based resources. So you first enter what, what will be from the unit. So this is the total at the plant level. So you need to sum up all the individual unit, individual inverter capability and enter the total here. Then enter additional wire devices. In this example, there is a fixed capacitor, there are four, 14 and the M megawatt capacitor banks. Also there is a fixed, there are fixed reactor. So just one shunt reactor and provide the uh, QMAX QMIN of each device and where it is installed. It shows 34.5 TV bus. Then you can provide a general, if you have plant controller and generator control, then you can provide description how you coordinate the uh, controls between the plant at plant level and at the individual generator level. Also, may, you may use like the type change control and the other uh, means to control the voltage. Describe it here. Now for transformer data, this one, I have one GSU and 50 pad mounts. So you enter the data for GSU and the pad mount transformers. And the Gentile data, so it is the 230 kV Gentile, the 1.65 miles from the ISO bus to the plant high voltage bus. Uh, we, we know this is the ACSR conductor and the, the, the conductor size. And we also entered the readings already. And you just need to verify all the information, make sure they are accurate. Since this is wind plant, there's a collector, and the collector is 34.5 kV. So you, you, you will do an equivalent circuit for us. So they, in, well, in this one, we model only one collector, so the rating, the normal rating and the emergency rating are the same. You enter, again enter the uh, rating in amps, we'll calculate MDA ratings. A winter, summer and winter, then enter the uh, positive and the zero, uh, positive and zero sequence of resistance and reactance. So this is a second example. Again, after you, you verify all the information and provide the missing information on this tab, go to the validation tab and verify each item and make sure on column A you have yes or NA throughout this have, uh, that we will also review and provide comments back to you. 
Any questions on this example? We'll take the first question. Hi, so I quickly saw that there was a protection uh, settings that were supposed to be put in. Um, were those protection settings for the substation relays, and is there one for the, um, like, the inverter or the turbine itself? So for this, we just asked the frequency and the voltage relays. So this is at the plant level. Okay. Okay, so it's not at the individual turbine or for a solar site at the inverter level. Actually, yes, because I think for inverters, that protection is actually at the inverter. So we are asking you for each type, kind of. Uh, so this is for all the wind turbine, they are identical, so you can. It depends on your setting, right? But usually for the uh, under uh for the crane frequency and the voltage relay, uh, they use the terminal voltage frequency measurement to do the protection. So actually, yeah, it, it is at individual unit level, although the okay. representation is equivalent and aggregate to the plant in the model. Understood. Okay. That's the only question. Then I'm done. Let's go back to the presentation. Presentation. Okay. okay. So I'll quickly go through the submission process that we have outlined in uh, section 10, 4.1 of the DPM for transmission planning process. Uh, given the volume of information the ISO and the PTOs are looking to receive, we, we have been very specific in terms of the subject line format and uh, the, the method of submission to the ISO and PTOs. Uh, we, we did create a, just a sample email to uh, better demonstrate what we are looking for in an email submission. Uh, one thing that the ISO will uh, do is once a email has been, once a data request via the email has been submitted, we will provide a confirmation of the receipt within 10 calendar days from uh, submission. It, uh, this receipt is not confirming whether it's a compliant submission or not. It's just confirming that, yes, we have received all the files, we have the, uh, and the email is with us today. Uh, this is the submission format that we are uh, expecting. Uh, this is just a uh, sample submission to uh, PTA as the PTO. The email subject line has already been included in the BPM. Uh, this is an example to better demonstrate what we're looking for. Uh, so it's the resource ID, the name of the solar farm, and then please uh, include BPM model submission so that we know the submission is specific to Section 10 uh, requirements of the BPM. The recipients of the data would be the ISO mailbox, which is at grid modeling data at galiso.com and the uh, specific email ID for the appropriate CTO. In this case, it's PGNE, so it's 10 model at pgne.com. All the email addresses for each uh, PTO has been provided in the BPM as well. Uh, the attachments to the email will be the uh, updated and completed generator data request template that Sonsu just went uh, through with everyone. Uh, test reports as required in the data request template and any other documentation, uh, EPCDYD files, single line, uh, all of that should be attached with the email submission. Uh, we'll uh, quickly demonstrate just a sample email before we move forward. So 
it, the, the sample email is in Word format. So subject of the email is the same as what we have in the site. Uh, just an example submission, please include a resource name, resource ID, the category of data submission, and the phase for data submission, and then lists out the attachments that you have provided. Uh, these attachments are not uh, exhaustive, but this is just an example uh, to help people uh, make an appropriate submission to the ISO and PTOs. Question. Uh, we have included a separate section in the BPM as well as to what is a compliant data submission. So there are five points of uh, determination of compliance. Uh, one is complete the data template as per the instructions provided in site. So please look at the instructions tab. We did walk through uh, that in detail today. Provide all the supplemental data documents, your EPCDYD files, your test reports, single line, and anything else that's requested in there. Uh, the EPC and DYD files should initialize in PSLF. So please provide a snapshot of initialization so that we know that these are uh, valid and working files. And, uh, in, and so please demonstrate through a table format that the spread between uh, your real and reactive power is between 1 and 1% for a 10-second no-fault run at full power output. This, again, is to, for us to be sure that the files we're dealing with are, uh, do not have errors. And this, this was the objective criteria we included in the BPM. And, again, just to reiterate, the administrative process for data submission should be at outlined in Section 10.4.1 of the BPM, and, uh, which we discussed in the previous slide. Thank you, Caller. Caller, are you there? Caller, check to see if your phone is muted. Yes, hi, this is Joel White with Sycamore Code Generation Company. Do you know when the emails requesting the data will be coming out? So uh, they will be coming out in phases. So for the phase one submissions, we will be sending it out in October, early October of 2018. And for all the phases after that, it will be six to eight months before the submission is due. There's a schedule in the um, BPM. So the, uh, so the emails are only a courtesy reminder, all the details that are in the BPM itself, so you can, at this point in time, everyone can go in the BPM, determine which, what category of data submission you are in and what your deadline is based on the BPM instructions and the uh, generated category data uh, spreadsheet that we have posted online. We've also included a link to that to help everyone at the end of the slide deck. Does that answer all your questions? Yes, thank you. All right, this is the final slide. Uh, just the links to the different uh, documents and issues we have talked through today. Uh, the first link is to the BPM for transmission planning process. Uh, second link goes to uh, the transmission planning web page. It's, it's more of a sub page of the transmission planning process webpage. It has all the spreadsheets that we discussed today, the generated data category spreadsheet and the data template spreadsheet for category one to five. Uh, email box addresses for the ISO and the PTOs. And we also have uh, an email address for you to submit any questions that you may have on this webinar or on the process itself. You can submit it at the uh, same email box that we have provided. Uh, but please include DPM model submission in the subject line uh, so that we know that this is a question specific to this process and not for something else. Uh, yeah, these, these are bulk mailboxes which monitor a lot of different things. Okay. Well, and just as a final reminder, please press pound two on your phone if you have a question.
All right. Um, I would just like to say thank you, everyone, for your time this morning. And as uh, Rudy stated, there is um, the email box um, to ask any additional questions. And with that, I will say have a great morning and a lovely week. Thank you to our speaker. Thank you all the audience for joining us today. The call has concluded, and you may now disconnect.